Hey, welcome everybody to Bigger Anyone Live, presented by Spinta Precision. Check them out at spintaprecision.com for all of your AR-15 barrel needs. And also, now they have Glock mags, I mean, sorry, Glock barrels and slides. Sorry, I was looking at my Men 2 mags over here that we'll be talking about in a little bit. Uh, also by Eggleston Munitions. You can check out eggleston.munitions.com. Uh, I know we talked about them on here last week and whatnot. They make uh, some really nice power-coated um, projectiles that are a fraction of cost. So if you're into high volume shooting and so forth or competition, it's a good option to check out if you're reloading. Um, also, um, by Applied Arsenal Finishes and Gunworks, uh, which many of you have seen are uh, what I call the Old Glory Rifle, <laughs> their American flag theme on it. You should check out their Facebook, by the way. They've got a rifle they just did for, I forgot what, what it was, something with, I don't know, it's the Armory or something. Really beautiful um, work done on that one for sure. Uh, it's another American flag themed, and uh, in fact, we're going to be meeting up with Brandon over at Applied Arsenal Finishes very soon to work on my um, Rock on Armory Map 1, um, which is basically a tank folio clone. I got it right here, all torn out, torn apart basically to, to send off to him to get it all done up differently. But man, I got to tell you, by the way, this pistol is super smooth, silky smooth. Um, and of course, our friends over at the range at 35 out there in Bolingbrook, Illinois as well. Um, hopefully we'll be visiting them coming up here soon as well. Um, so welcome everybody uh, with us tonight, of course. we got some of our regulars. we got uh, TJ, the uh, Lead Slinging Ginger on Instagram. Welcome. Is my audio doing okay, by the way, guys? Yeah, man, you're doing fine. Okay, because it's a little choppy on my end. I hope you guys don't have any issues. We've had some issues with the internet here and so forth. So welcome, TJ. Um, and also we got Kent from Green Mountain Defense. Welcome, Kent. How we doing? Good, good. How are you? How are you doing tonight? I am gonna take a nap here, like as soon as this is over. It's gonna be a long nap. It's called going to bed for the night, or <laughs> well, yeah, I'll probably wake up at like two and dick around on the internet again. Nice. And then we'll first got Corey from Southern Style Beards. Welcome, Corey. Hi guys, what's going on? Oh, not too much. So, um, yeah, we just got some cool stuff going on. I mean, I, basically, we're gonna do a little open gun gun chat and stuff. I know I mentioned about. Um, Cerakote and everything, man. Like I said, this pistol, I'm anxious to get this done. Um, one of the things I've been looking at is uh, just to kind of give you guys a little bit of a teaser about it. Um, I want to do something kind of simple, okay, on this particular pistol. I, I've debated about doing anything with it because it is a very low cost uh, option. I want to say they're in like the three hundred dollar or something range, um, roughly, um, somewhere closer to. Probably closer to four, maybe. I'm not sure, but uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, so uh, before the whole Star Wars movie thing was really ramping up here recently, I was thinking about doing something in white. I've seen some, you know, black and white pit, uh, rifles and things, and I uh, got the idea. I'm like, yeah, that'd be really cool. Kind of almost like a stormtrooper esque type type deal. So I'm thinking about doing this in a just a white theme with all the controls in black. You know, probably leave the the safety, you know, in red, of course. Um, I'm looking at putting some like Hogue uh, grips on it. Um, reason why, I, one of the things that caught my eye with Hogue is that they have a aluminum style grip for these that uh, they have a smooth finish. They also have checkered, like texturized ones. They have a whole long lineup. You can go check out hoguegrips.com, I believe is the website. Um, H O G U E, for those that haven't seen them. Uh, but they have a slick, like gloss black grip that's made out of aluminum. And I said, that'd be really kind of cool. It looks like it would really fit the theme of like the whole Stormtrooper type deal, uh, black and white, really well. Because honestly, the grips that come with this, they, Rock Island Armory, you know, imports these in and, and really it's a tank foglio. Um, they uh, actually include tank foglio uh, user manual with it, owner's manual with it, in fact. So, um, I forgot what I was going to say about that, but uh, it's just, yeah, I'm, I got sidetracked, but uh, really nice pistol, I think, for the money. Um, one thing that I was kind of looking at, too, is this particular version doesn't have, well, I'll rephrase it. It has a sight that is all one piece with the slide. Um, one of the drawbacks, you know, especially if you want to use it for competition use and so forth, yeah, I kind of would like to maybe put different slides on it. And 
you know, what are my options? I'm like, well, how, how is it machined so that you could put side, sights on it? Like, how is the, the other versions of these pistols, you know, done like that? I'm like, I have to think that somehow it could be attached. Well, I didn't realize this. It's it's a really weird, I want to say it's almost like a dovetail, but it's not quite. It's like, it's more like a, a U-shaped pocket they machine out where the sight is just kind of like lengthwise. It doesn't slide in sideways of the slide. It goes in like from the front, and there's a set screw in the middle of it. So it's like a it's like a U shaped pocket. I believe it's like wedge shaped, kind of like a dovetail in a sense. You know, um, where if you were to slide the sight in, you can't just pull the sight off this way. You'd have to be able to slide it back out towards the front. But there's a set screw in the middle of it, um, or in in a portion of it anyway. Well, I found a, a gunsmith that actually says that he does these, so he can actually do that. So something I might do down the road. I'm kind of debating it, um, honestly, because the I want to get the Cerakote work done to it. Um, I don't know if I want to jump into putting different sights on it yet or not. Honestly, I kind of thought about some type of uh, sight with a fiber optic in the front, you know, and, and something different in the back just for more of a competition style sight. Um, but all in all, just like I said, it's a, it's a nice little pistol. Something about doing just a white theme and uh, through a, our friends over at Applied Arsenal finishes, of course. Brandon does wonderful work. Um, probably going to have him do some other stuff for me down the road not too long from now. Um, but yeah, this thing's just. I'm amazed after I get all this settled, just how how smooth this slide, you know, fits in here. There's there's a little bit of wiggle, but just how smooth it is. Like it's almost on bearings. Um, love it. So anyway, beat that up that topic up a little bit. Um, so uh, yeah, speaking of sites, um, I'll just mention this now too. You know, we got part three of uh, the um, MMP site failure here. Of course on Laura's um, MP Pro. So to kind of go over the story again for those that maybe haven't heard this before yet. First, we lost the front sight. When I say lost, it basically sheared off just while shooting. came flying off one day. So Smith & Wesson was nice enough to send a replacement pretty quickly out. Got that replaced. Fine. Great. Happy, right? So we go off the range, test it out, running it. You know, she's shooting it, I'm shooting it. I notice as I'm shooting it, now the rear sight, you can't see it here, but the rear sight, there's a pin inside here. If I hold it steady, you might be able to kind of see it. So you can see the hole through it now, right there. Um, there's just a roll pin through the, the center of the sight. That started walking out. It was loose. It was coming out the side, almost all, like, you know, a good portion of the way out. I'm like, what the hell? So I, I contact them. They send out a replacement rear sight. Okay. Well, the rear, replacement rear sight comes, and the adjustment screw is not there. They didn't, like, send one with it. So I said, hey, you guys didn't send one with it. You know, and I'm like, well, those screws are kind of hard to come by. I'm like, really? Um, and I, my thought was maybe they just figured they kind of keeps people from going out and saying, hey, my rear sight broke, my rear sight broke, and getting a free sight or something out of them. And that's not the case here. Um Rick, just so, to clarify, is they Smith and Wesson, or is they? Yes, they I'm, I'm sorry. Good, good, good point. Uh, they is Smith and Wesson has been taking care of us at this point, and I will say, too, to add to that, they've been very good. They've been they ship the stuff out pretty quick, you know, and everything gets taken gets taken care of. I have no complaint with Smith and Wesson's customer service whatsoever. Um, they've been really good. My only my one complaint, I guess, was just that they didn't include that screw with it. It was kind of like petty in a sense, but. Maybe that, that's legitimate. Maybe they just don't have them in stock with those screws, and they had these sitting there. I don't know um, what the deal is there, but uh, it was kind of like, yeah, that's nice. They didn't really send the whole site. They sent you know part of it. So anyway, they said, yeah, if you just swap over your screw, sure, okay. So I took the screw out, swapped it over into this new rear sight. <clears throat> you know, ran it down. <clears throat> excuse me, ran it down so that you know the rear sight was just kind of sitting like flat, and uh, didn't didn't like torque it down. I like didn't over tighten it or anything like that. You know, just ran it down to the point where it stopped and that was it. So we take it out to the range. We're testing it out. Laura's shooting it, everything. And she's like, yeah, you know, it seems like it's it's maybe shooting a little bit off or whatever. So you want to try it out. I'm like, okay. So I'm like, all right. I noticed at the front sight post where I'm shooting with it, I forget if it was shooting low or high. I don't even remember how it was anymore off the top of my head because I'll probably screw it up how I'm trying to explain it. But anyway, I realized I had to raise up the rear sight to kind of bring the front sight post down to get my sight alignment right. So I, I went ahead and did a couple clicks on it. I think it was like maybe four clicks um, on that adjustment screw. Went back to shooting it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Ran another maybe five rounds or so through it. 
Um, went to take the mag out, you know, put it on the table, and I went to pop the round out. I'm like, oh, the mag's empty. There's, and by the way, this has been safety checked prior to filming. There's nothing in it. So I'm moving around like that when I'm talking. Quit don't pointing get, that gun at me, Rick. Yeah, don't get concerned when I point it at the camera. Oh, my God. <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, so I, I'm like, all right, you know what? I'm just going to run this one loose round out real quick, throw it in the gun, you know, go shoot it. And, you know, it goes, bing. And I'm like, what the hell? Well, like, that, hey, Laura. That, that's how you know it's done. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it didn't <laughs> actually make a bing sound. Maybe it did. It couldn't hear it with my ear protection on. But I was like, really? Um, so I'm looking at it. I'm like, yeah, okay. So it, the screw, it's still in there. I didn't even get a chance to glue my players out and get it out. But it, it'll probably come out. It's When I push this down, it's, there's a little bit of it sticking up. So I that doesn't, do that doesn't also act like a set screw, does it? <clears throat> no, it does not. There is actually, if okay. you can see in front of if, the as long as, it, as long as it's just an adjustment screw, I would just yeah. drift that whole thing out, man. What do you mean? Drift out. it. Yeah, oh, just, take the whole site out? Yeah, and then replace it with sites that aren't pieces of shit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that's ultimately, that's probably the route we're going to go, honestly. Um, Laura was looking at some Dawson precision sights with me, but they don't have adjustable rear ones anymore from Dawson. So I don't know that we're, what's going to happen with that. We're still kind of looking at options for that. All um, sights are adjustable with the right size hammer. Yeah, if you want to. And a file. <laughs> Never mind. I ain't going to say. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> and a file. Get a file and a hammer. There you go. So anyway, yeah, that was, that was really disappointing. I contacted them. Smith & Weston's like, well, can you get the broken piece out of the rear sight? And I haven't tried it yet because I just honestly I haven't had a chance to find my needle spiders and pull it out. But I'm sure I probably can. I don't think there's any reason why I couldn't. So that's uh, that's my story about the site failure. Um, At any and, time, uh, did they offer to just take the whole thing back and fix it themselves? No, and I never asked them to either. In all fairness, because I'd rather not send it back to them. Really, especially, you know, I don't know what kind of grief they'll give us about the sites based. They shouldn't, because in theory, you know, putting a you know, Apex trigger in there, for example, and a couple of other modifications and whatnot. What you know, what are they going to say about it? I don't know, but really, those sites shouldn't be affected by the you know trigger, not the failures we're seeing. I mean, we never removed the front sight to have that happen. It was never no, banged against that, anything, never dropped. No, it's, it's, it's cheap, made in China hardware. The the sites, truth be told, high vis sites are actually decent sites. The problem that problem they run into is their their screws are cheap Chinese metal. That and those, will, those will shear off in a heartbeat. I've heard many people saying after I post that, oh those those sites are junk. The front ones always break or they have this and that. I mean I've never I have not seen a site snap off like that yet. I mean man I've horses. seen I've seen even the greatest sites. I've seen Dawson's break. You Sorry know? I had to move my headphones for a second. No I, I've seen Dawson's break. So really? I mean, there is nothing out. Yeah, you run it in competition hard <laughs> enough, it will break. I promise you. Um, you can make anything break, pretty much. Yeah, exactly. Goes. Exactly. If you try hard um, enough. But at the same time, you know, it, I mean, again, ha I'll echo what you stated. Hats off to Smith and Weston's <clears throat> customer service. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I've dealt with them on multiple occasions. Um, as a matter of fact, I just got my my Thompson Center Hawking back from service and repair. Uh, and, you know, they went out of their way and even lapped the barrel for me and cleaned all the, the pitting out of it from the corrosion. And it's like a brand new barrel now. So, I mean, yeah, they, they go above and beyond. But they could save themselves so much trouble by just going the extra inch or two and using better hardware. Right. Like that one screw would have cost them what? In overhead. Compar think. Compared to what they have in there, right? Right, the the shipping on the damn thing probably cost him more than the difference in the investment it exactly. cost. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, but some dude with an MBA in supply chain management made that decision, so deal with it. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me tell you what you don't know about <laughs> about merchandising and shipping. Mm hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, TJ, about, you know, what are some of the goals and so forth we're looking at, uh, you know, for our shooting and stuff for this coming year since we're coming up to the end pretty quick here. 
And by the way, we, we may or may not have a show next week because I may be traveling, so we'll see. So this may be the, the last show of the year, possibly. Yeah. So what, what, what are your thoughts on it? Go ahead. Yeah, so again, yeah, 2017 was a great year for me. Um, certainly uh, expanded my skill level and enhanced my skill level in, in the shooting sports. Uh, so with that, I have I have three goal, three primary goals in mind. Uh, the first of which is to continue to advance my skill level. Um, and I think the best way that I'm going to do that is to get back to the basics and just stick with the simplistic approach to shooting. So as an example, I'm getting rid of my one to six. I'm going back to a one to four. Uh, really? With, yeah, with, but it's a different reticle, so it requires MOA holdover rather than trying to make sure I'm getting – you know, 3,100 feet per second out of my reloads, I need to actually chrono my reloads for the true velocity and just know my holdovers. And I think that makes things just a little bit easier. Um, so getting back to basics uh, in order to just really get back to enjoying shooting more, uh, but again, to try to advance myself by kind of clearing my mind of all the other, you know, BS that, that clouds it when you're running a competition. Uh, <clears throat> keeping it simpler. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, so, uh, second goal would be to, uh, pick up the, the long range game a little bit more. Uh, probably not going to be doing any PRS matches, but I, that's one thing or one area that I haven't done a whole lot of, uh, and that's just long range shooting. So 500 yards plus, uh, my, my kid brother actually just picked up a, a six, five Creed more. Uh, I'm going to be teaching him how to reload with that platform and I'm going to obviously go out and shoot it as well. Uh, just to take the time, just to expand my, my influence or my experience with something aside from just three gun and, you know, shooting paper and steel at 50 yards and under. And then lastly, uh, I think my next goal is going to be, uh, to advance someone else's shooting capability. Uh, or introduce a new shooter to the shooting sports, uh, to whatever capacity that might be. So in, in an extreme case, somebody who's, who's, who's maybe on the fence, anti-gun, pro-gun, you know, those guys that are wishy-washy on where they stand politically, um, you know, just bringing them out, bringing them out to the range and, and showing them the truth about the Second Amendment. Uh, or just, you know, taking a young – uh, up and coming or or relatively freshman, if you will, shooter that's trying to get better at competing and just kind of st take them under the under the proverbial wing and show them the ropes. So I think that's where I'm going to go for for 2018. Nice, very cool. I mean, Kent, you got some goals you want to discuss for this coming year? Is it on the road here? Sure. Let's see. I wasn't as well prepared as TJ was for this, but let's see. I'm not either. I, I got um, some ideas. Yeah. I'll give you guys a chance to do that, and I'll give you a minute to think about them. <laughs> to continue to attempt to anchor skills that I'm not so anchored in. So when we go out to the range, we, we have our, like, ten favorite drills or our five favorite drills that we just smoke all the time regardless because that's what we're good at and that's what we enjoy doing. So I'm going to spend more time doing this stuff I'm not so good at and I don't enjoy doing so much. Um, one-handed weapons manipulation, malfunction clearances, one-handed offhand shooting, things like that. Stuff that uh, I'm not as well anchored in, and uh, we'll see what we can do there. Um, let's see. Goal number two, to be a, a true, honest-to-God gun activist, not a – not a Facebook, YouTube gun activist, but actually go to the rallies, actually go to the meetings, um, pick up the phone, call the people, um, continue to continue to be more in their face as far as you know what uh, what we want and, and what we expect out of our politicians, and you know I'm going to make a better commitment to get out there physically and, and be present. So I, I think that's a good goal, and uh, let's see. I'm going to try to train. I, I've been I've been in a rut as far as like the places I go for training for my own continuing education. So I'm going to go some other places. I'm going to go out to Alliance in Ohio, maybe, uh, maybe try to get in a, a gun site trip or a 
trip trip to some place to some other instructor some other place that I haven't had exposure at yet and uh, see how that goes for me I'm thinking Alliance in Ohio for sure is on the list but uh, other than that yeah there's three quick and easy goals for you hmm. I like it so um how about you uh, Corey Ah, oh, he just had to go to me. Um, I mean, other other than uh, my my 2017 procedures, I've still got 2018 procedures to do. Um, but in that uh, in that 2018, I still, you know, need to focus on uh, my psychology degree and my schooling. Um, obviously, uh, well, no, no, but uh, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Um, all, wait, wait, wait. A psychology degree could be firearms related. It could be. It could be. But it's not. But uh, <laughs> I really <laughs> – I'm looking forward to, to finally getting Southern Style beers up and going. And through that, you know, I, I you know, I want to do some Second Amendment stuff with the company. Um, I, I definitely want to get out and, uh, and, and train a lot more than I've never had before. <laughs> but uh, I, I – I really want to get out and I really want to start being, uh, being more active and in, in shooting, um, especially growing my, my personal Instagram page, um, and, and things. Cause, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good. Uh, I'm pretty good, you know, going back and forth through, through some things, but, uh, I definitely really want to take the time and, uh, and really getting, getting to shoot the, the AR, a lot and uh do some basic drills and stuff from uh holstering out so cool pretty cool um so i probably got a lot of things i want to do this coming year <clears throat> number one is finding a range hopefully a place to, to become a member of um to be able to do some shooting outdoors more uh that's something that's high, high, high on my list um you know coming from illinois we're I had access to uh, a really nice, beautiful facility um, that was relatively within, you know, 45 minutes to an hour of my house. I, I didn't realize how spoiled I was. Moving down here, you think, a lot of my friends think, hey, go to the south. Oh, yeah, everyone likes guns, gun friendly. Yeah, but finding places to shoot is still an issue. I mean, there's places to shoot, but um, <clears throat> a lot of membership, you know, type, you know, places that are places, private ranges, I should say, that require memberships also require you to know somebody to get on there, you know, to sponsor you to be able to apply to become a member and there might be a wait list as well. So that's a little bit of a challenge I'm trying to overcome. Um, <clears throat> other goals is, like I said, I want to do more outdoor shooting so I can do some more long range type stuff versus shooting indoors to kind of get back to, to shooting AR more. Um, I mean, I do a lot of that with indoor ranges and stuff, but it's not the same. We got we got to do a little bit of shooting with our friend John Boyet that was uh, he's been on here as well a few times. He's a firearms instructor, really great guy, and he's been helping us out with uh, you know, some of our transfers too. By the way, um, great guy to work with. Um, but uh, other than that, um, getting some more rifles built for the Fifty States project that's on my agenda for this coming year. Um, skills, just you know, just practicing, you know, when I, as I can, of course. Uh, with the YouTube channel, other than the 50 States Project, um, or even part of actually, is trying to get out and do more um, videos that are maybe uh, at facilities of, of different companies. Um, you know, getting to do interviews with company owners and stuff, bringing some insight to some of the more behind the scenes part of the industry as I can. Um, you know, we really wanted to go to SHOT Show this year, but <clears throat> as we were discussing offline, and I, I mentioned this before, it, you know, I've got access to go. I've got you know range day. I've got all that stuff ready. But problem is, the funding to do it, it's extremely expensive to go out to Vegas uh, for these shows. Um, people don't realize that you know YouTube dollars don't cover the expense of hotel stays and meals and airfare and all that stuff. Uh, no one's paying me to go. I, I do the YouTube channel stuff because I enjoy it. I enjoy sharing information with people. Um, I like the people like you guys that are on here tonight with us and, and our viewers and so forth or, or people that are listening to us. Um, there's so many great people in this industry and, and in the community around firearms. Um, so needless to say, it's not like a, a profitable venture in any way. It doesn't pay for itself. It ends up costing lots of money to do these things. So 
having to sit back and, and this year look at, you know, what it would cost me to go there and the other things I want to do. <clears throat> I can spread the money that I would spend out at SHOT Show in one week over several different, you know, um, I don't know if they say events, but several different adventures, I guess, is the way to put it, in a sense. Yeah, adventures is a good way to say it, where we can go out to maybe some different, you know, locations and film and do different things. I know I want to go to NRA show this year, and, you know, with it being out in, in uh, Texas, I've never been to Texas before. And, <clears throat> again, that's going to be another airfare-type trip. NRA show this past year, luckily, was in Atlanta. We were able to drive down to it. It wasn't as far. Uh, so those are some of the things we're looking at doing, you know, getting out more to more filming different different events and things like that trying to get set up with the range to go shoot at you know just get more practice timing with that um and uh as far as my own personal firearms collection i kind of talked about already about the stormtrooper type build that i want to do with that that uh rock island armory pistol um and uh get that wrapped up and um one thing i'd like to do too is you know we've just finished up our ar-10 build a little while ago and got that out to the range runs pretty well i want to get some more rounds through it picked up some of that malaysian ammo and uh to test out and uh i want to go ahead and do that of course that's going to require outdoor shooting hopefully we'll get out to to uh a range pretty soon where we can do that and get some filming of it um but ultimately i also want to add an optic on that rifle of course you know i gotta pace that out to where i can afford to do that and buy something and i know corey we were talking about that a little bit um, you know, when it comes to the, to the AR platform, yeah, I've got, a, I've got some, um, one to sixes, you know, one to six, uh, power scopes, uh, and a one to four X, you know, which are great for like three gun and competition use and things like that, which is what they would be used for. I mean, in my opinion, you can use them for whatever, but that's one of the things. Um, but I don't really have a lot of experience with more long range, uh, scopes. And I'm trying to learn more about that and get a little more, um, comfortable with the options out there before I jump into something because I'd like to buy buy a scope for the AR-10 slash 308, you know, build to get down there so it's more of like a more longer range type rifle. Um, so, Corey, I know you recently picked something up if you want to talk about that as far as optics, you know, for our friends who are right on. I, uh, I've i I've been trying to – Indiana had, <clears throat> had such a – a twister kind of year with its with its hunting laws it took away rifles hunting with a rifle oh man uh before the season even commenced and <clears throat> they did they overlooked it in the bill when they passed it last year or the, this year and uh, and i believe if i'm not mistaken the dnr put in an emergency halt on it and then still let people hunt with rifles but it wasn't before like two weeks before the season that they announced that um um but uh anyways i am looking to uh purchase my uh my first rifle um this coming january uh pretty much like in in the in the beginning of january early enough um and this weekend, uh, Right On Optics was having a massive one one time only fifty percent off sale. It's never happening again. And uh, I was able to pick up a, a really nice scope for a rifle. I'm looking at getting. I'm looking at getting a uh, uh, a Remington two seventy, and it, it comes it comes with a uh, a scope already on it. But I wanted something that can pick up uh, a little extra distance than what the scope that's actually on it goes goes to um normally it's anywhere from 50 to 100 yards on a you know a, a regular stock scope and i needed something that could probably push about 250 and uh i just went ahead and i i talked to i talked to right on and i talked to the owner and uh i i got what i needed so i'm i'm really looking at getting it at the end of the week Oh yeah, you haven't even got it yet. I was just, hey, you want to show us? But yeah, that's right. It just, yeah, it's just happened. There's no way it got shipped out that fast. Yeah. Uh, well, it's 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 on its way. I should have well, it uh, Thursday or Friday. But right. Yeah, I, I haven't got it yet. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. And, and they're pretty quick. I mean, yeah. Brady, Brady, who's been on our show before, super nice guy. Um, definitely. You know, we actually did an interview with him for the Fifty States Project, and we have mm -hmm. one of his optics on the Arizona rifle build. Uh, it's a wonderful X to have. 
yeah, I definitely, I definitely, when I, when I talked to Brady, I definitely mentioned your name and, uh, told him, you know, stop by, come back on the show. And, uh, yeah. you know, I think I was on here. I think I was on here when he was on here one time. We have to go and, back uh, to the record and see, but yeah, but, uh, <clears throat> he, he, you know, very helpful. Everybody, everybody there, you know, I don't know anything about scopes. It's my first rifle. It's my first scope. I know nothing, absolutely nothing. And uh, I've got the the best helping me, so yeah, I really I appreciate bringing brain. the team. <clears throat> what did you get? Um, Excuse me. Let me uh, look it up here. See, I don't even I don't even know by heart. That's how. See, so that's I'm, what I was talking with him. And by the way, they have you know probably one of the best or the best. As I'm wearing my Vortex hat too, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, they have you know Vortex is a good warranty also, but. Uh, you know, Rayon Optics has a great warranty. I mean, as well. I mean, basically, they're not gonna send you back. Um, you know, repaired optic. They're gonna replace it. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. They don't mean to mess around with that. You know, they want to make sure you have the right stuff. And I believe if, if for some reason they they quit making that model that you have, that they'll I believe and you can check with them. Um, say your scope or your optic fails, and they don't make that one, they'll give you or exchange it for whatever for the most current model. I believe. That's uh, okay. what they would do. I, I, and again, don't quote me, but that's what I, as far as I remember, that's what uh, they would do. And like I said, super nice people to deal with. You know, U.S. based company, of course. Optics, for the most part, are made overseas. That's just a fact. I mean, yeah, it's just where you're getting them from, where you're sourcing them from. Mm -hmm. And of course, they have their say. You know, the company who's who's selling them, or you know, is having them made for that their company based to what their their requirements, what they want, you know, to be made. Um, yeah, so it is their product. Yeah, to it, be you know. to be fair, even those overseas scopes are, are the optics that are being made overseas are act, have actually gotten a lot better with regards to quality. Yeah, like I, I remember <clears throat> what, barely even ten years ago, you know, you'd pick up you know a, a foreign made optic and it you'd expect it to fail after the first magazine. Yeah, there's now, people. not so much like Hollow Sun, Hollow Sun. I mean that you know I, th I think they're Chinese based. I think I believe uh, so. They make a, a damn good optic. Um, and well, so yeah, we uh, you know, with Laura's AR from you know, um, she was shooting their I think it's the five hundred three C or whatever, I forget what the number is on it. It's their uh, sixty five MOA you know circle with the dot in the middle, um, red dot, and uh, five hundred fifty yards hitting targets. I mean, yeah, I've speed. got a I've got a Sig Romeo four. And for those that, that don't know, it, uh, SIG licensed their optics through Holosun. It is a Holosun mm -hmm. with the SIG uh, warranty on it. So Holosun only has, I think, a three-year warranty on their own stuff. But SIG has a lifetime unconditional warranty on theirs. That's awesome. Uh, but it's, So you get the same optic. and it, Great quality. I, I, run it, I ran it on my PCC last year. I've got it on my AR-15 pistol that I just built, and I mean, it, it does everything you'd expect it to do. And I beat the hell out of it, and it stood up to every bit of it. So, very cool. I got to, so the the scope I got is the RTS uh, Mod Five. Nice. It's a four sixteen by forty. So, is it illuminated too or no? It's what? Is it illuminated reticle or no? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> does this have an IR after it? No, no. So it might not be illuminated. I don't know. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure either. Because you know, some some of them are and some are not. But uh, realistically, are you going to be hunting at night with it? Probably not. It well, it actually says that it uh, it's it's one of their best hunting hunting scopes that they have, and it's uh, it does help illuminate in the in the early morning and in the late evening. Yeah, most states it's illegal to hunt with an illuminated reticle too. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. I'm not in the hunting, yeah, so I didn't even know that. So, it, it wait, 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 really? Who really what? It, keep in mind, it depends. It's not necessarily illegal to hunt with an illuminated reticle, but to hunt late enough to where you would need an illuminated oh, reticle. Yes. Oh, okay, got so, it. So, pr prime example, uh, uh, archery hunting in Virginia. If you have a site that has that little UV uh, screw-in lamp mm -hmm. that goes on a lot of the sites now, if you get caught with that on your person while bow hunting in Virginia, the, the game wardens can ding you for that. Wow. 
<laughs> yeah. It's crazy. Now keep in mind that's bow hunting. Yeah. A lot different yeah. than what might come factory on a, on a, a rifle scope. But, uh, I mean, to, to hunt late enough, you're, you're not going to need the illumination. Yeah. I, what I mean, want, what you ultimately want is in dim light, like that, that dusk and dawn setting. Yeah. Your reticle should turn like a grayish white color. Mm -hmm. So the contrast of the reticle increases with the dim light. And that's going to do everything you needed to do for a hunting environment. Yeah. I've, I, you know, I've used my hunting partner's got a nice scope on his uh, Smith and Wesson compass. And I think it, it does the same exact thing. But uh, I, I mean, my grandpa's got bushnells on one of his lever action 22s. And I don't know what the other scope is. I mean, I, I don't know enough about scopes to do anything with. I know it's, you know, it's got windage and stuff on it too. I mean, it's just a, a lot, a lot, you know, I'm going to have to learn, but I'm excited about, you know, to get, get to the range and practice and, and uh, do some cool stuff with it. Cause it's pretty sweet. The three awesome. things that, that matter to me that I would recommend to you, Corey, for, for what you need to worry about with your new scope. One, obviously the clarity, mm -hmm. uh, which I'm sure that's not going to be an issue. It sounds like you got a really good deal on a great scope. Yeah. Um, but two true sub tensions. So the distance between your hash marks or your bullet drop, whatever the reticle might look like, if the document says it's two MOA from one to another, then it better be two MOA from one to another. That needs to be absolutely <clears> accurate. <throat> and then hold zero, of course. After you put 50 rounds through it, is it still going to be zeroed? Mm -hmm. right. And then the warranty. If something happens to it, are you covered with your investment? Because the optic... I would argue is almost more crucial than the trigger. Yeah. Like you get all these people that want to have like these super match grade triggers on these rifles or I want to go, I want, I want the trigger to, to go off as soon as I blow on it the right way. But in reality, if you don't have good glass on your rifle, it, it might as well be a doorstop. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You can't be able to see it to hit it. Yeah. So, I mean, and, and that's, that's, what's good about, about my, uh, my hunting partner is he's, he's taught me a lot. You know, I've only been hunting for a year and, uh, he's, he's taught me a lot about hunting. He's been doing it for 40, 50 years. And, uh, you know, I can't wait for him to help me, uh, cite this thing in and, uh, get, uh, get it going to where I can get a big buck next year. Nice. Um, I've got a, uh, something I was going to talk about too. Um, I know I sent the show this on Instagram and so forth. The uh, Men 2 mags. Uh, you might have seen some of the videos where I was testing out their AR-15 mags. This is their, their Mod 1 or Generation 1 um, magazines. Uh, you might know this one from the video. You know, it's got, I think, six holes through it. Blew out the backside. You know, this is after I drove over with my truck, so it's all scraped up. I even did it on the side with a lug... Uh, for the uh, mag catch one is just to see if I could screw it up enough that it wouldn't grab. I tried dropping on the feed lips, you know, dropped it loaded, did everything I could to beat this thing up before we even shot holes through it. Still ran like a champ. Shot the holes through it, you know, one or two holes, I think it was, I don't remember, and this, you know, everything was still fine. Um, but we, one, after one, you know, a couple of shots or whatever, it blew out the spring. That's why this is not only because it's like the exit wound or whatever you want to call it that, um, but, uh, Part of why I was taking chunks with it, too, not only because probably the bolt was probably, you know, somewhat rotating and whatnot, but also because the spring was getting hit and it was blowing the spring out of the back side. With that spring broken, I was able to load, I believe, 15 rounds into it. Um, and then, of course, the spring was stuck out, so it wouldn't, it wouldn't allow the flower to go any further. And ran those 15 rounds through it and locked the bolt back, functioned flawlessly. So took it back, you know, went ahead and put a new spring in it. Um, and a follower, just nothing was wrong with the follower, just because it was attached to the spring. I pulled out another mag and just threw it in there and ran another, you know, 30 rounds right through it. No problem with this whole side blown out. The mag runs, and this is after it's been, you know, damaged and beat up and whatnot. So, needless to say, they make a good product. So, um, they're getting into making Glock mags too, but before I get to that, I want to kind of show the mod too. So, they're, um, Mod 2 mags, the newest version of the 30-rounders uh, that they have here. And they also have 20-rounders as well. And I, I want to say they have a smaller one, too, than that. 
maybe like a 10 rounder, I think, but I'm not 100% certain off the top of my head anymore. Um, just to kind of show you the differences, you know, a little bit different uh, design. They've got like these serrations in the front, as where the mod one does not. Um, it feels a little bit like a, maybe it could be a different material. I'm not 100% certain. Um, on the mod ones, they had this nice little, it's hard to see in the light. Um, it's got this guy holding a rifle on it. You know, it looks like a, yeah, it looks like an AR from like, you know, basically like, um, you know, something from like 1776 with the guy holding AR or whatever. But um, again, the floor plate's a little different. You can see the differences between the way they designed it. I'm holding these different lengths or different distances from the camera, so it looks a little weird. But they're the, they're the same size, relatively speaking. I mean, you know, um, but you can see they just kind of changed the design up a little bit. What's kind of cool is you can mark these, you know, if you want to put, like, something on the bottom of it to kind of mark it in those little dimples. Um, and uh, one thing I noticed, too, and I had commented this to them um, a while ago, when these first came out, I noticed that the, that the locking uh, lug area here was a little bit shallow. Um, these locked in solidly on the majority of my rifles, except for um, initially on my F1 rifle. And my F1 rifle, it just happens to be that particular receiver. I think there's a little more slop in the magwell on it. Um, don't know why. But initially, when I first got it put together, you could you know slide these in and kind of kind of give a little bit of a tug and get them to pop out. They didn't fall out while shooting because I tested it out that way, but just be, you just you know, didn't have as much resistance to rip the mag out without pushing the button. So, um, and so, so what I did is basically on that particular rifle, I went ahead and I kind of uh, adjusted the um, the lug for the uh, magazine catch, shaved some of the material down around it to make the lug a little bit deeper into the mag um, to grab into them a little bit better. But I also, on some of these, the first generation, I went ahead and just kind of shaved a little bit of material out of that square to kind of make it the, the indentation where that lug would lock a little bit deeper um, just to do it. This one, is, this one is untouched, and it works fine, but it's just something I kind of noticed on them. Um, but the new ones, and it's, you can't really tell by the camera because it's so such a difference, but that, that area here is a little bit deeper. And... Um, I believe that that's something they, you know, that's when actually they told me they were going to be changing when they designed it, the second version. They're going to increase the depth of it so that you can have a little bit better of a positive engagement in the latch. Um, yeah, and you know, you wouldn't think that that, that little, you know, thousandth of an inch would make exactly. a huge difference. It Let me does. Tell you, when, I, when I bought my, my pistol caliber carbine, uh, it came with a Pro Mag, stick mag, mm -hmm. and that, that, the catch, the catch indentation on that mag just would not hold in. Really? Yeah. So once I, once I upgraded to, uh, I went with the, uh, the Colt pattern mags from Palmetto State, uh, the mm -hmm. actual metal ones. Uh, I'll tell you, a huge difference. So, and That's I went cool. back and forth with with CMMG mm -hmm. uh, on that it might be the actual mag catch itself. <clears throat> um, and they sent me a new one anyway. But sure enough, once I changed the mags out. Huge difference. That was it. So yeah. um, now they're getting into Glock mags. So I've got this one of the first ones. <laughs> they don't mind a little bit of silver that's on there. It's probably a little bit of transfer from the, the Cerakote. Maybe I don't even know on her pistol. But uh, we Laura's got a Glock 43, and that's what these are for. I believe they have them for the 42 and then the 43 right now currently. Of course, they got the little you know holes in the back to identify uh, you know how many rounds are in it and so forth. But they run great. Um, work perfectly fine. Um, I'm I'm anxious to when they get the Glock 19 and 17 mags out, which are in the works, and I think they're coming out sometime next month. You know, but of course, release dates on things always change. So I'm you know hopefully optimistic by the end of January they'll probably have them out since these were out. But uh, I'm into like I said, they make great stuff. Made in the U.S. Uh, I believe they're out of Idaho, if I remember off the top of my head. Excuse me. And um, one thing I'll note too is mag extension. So. You notice their floor plate with this number two. The number two is actually like their detent for taking the magazine floor plate off. Same with AR mags. So um, when it comes to these, right now currently they don't have. There's you know isn't a magazine extension that I, at least I know of that'll fit it and work with it. Granted, there might be something out there that does. I just don't. I'm not aware of it at this point because most of them you know operate based on the design of the regular standard Glock mags. Well, they're going to be working on, I believe, and I you know. 
you never know. It's not out yet, so it's not set in stone. But I believe that it's under development to add a, um, you know, a four plate extension. They add a couple rounds extra into this mag um, that they're going to be coming out out with. Uh, hopefully, in the next couple months or something. It sounds like, but you never know because there's been some companies that will say, "Yeah, we're probably going to come out with this," and that doesn't happen. Got to really get it to the point where it's, you know, it's a little closer to the release time, I guess, we would put it to, to make that promise. But yeah, I, I think great mag. Way cheaper than getting the Glock mags, you know. Even if if you're dead set on, you know, because Glock 43 is is really geared towards a concealed carry style, you know, configuration. If you're really dead set on running the Glock factory mags, running factory, you know, where for your carry purposes, then these would make an excellent option for taking to the range, um, for doing your practice and practicing, especially with a six round mag. You know, how many times do you want to keep reloading the mags? At the range, why not load a bunch of these things up and take them with you to the range? And then they're ready to go, so you can go to your practicing and not have to worry about it. And uh, I want to say they're probably, I gotta look at their website, see what the pricing is. I don't even get into it, but it's it's substantially less expensive than buying a Glock factory mag. Uh, so I think these are a great option for at least for practicing, you know, may possibly even carrying, uh, because you know, again, I've only used these a little bit, but. From what I've seen with the rest of their mags and experience with them, you know, they're not building, you know, total junk mags and stuff. You know, these, these things run and they haven't had any issues with them. No, uh, that's a, that's something so. I'd really like to see come out of SHOT Show this year. I'd like to see more affordable polymer magazines. Mags For which are platform? A lot of them. Okay. Pick, pick one. Um, because mags and Kent, I think you and I have talked about this before on the show, Mags are meant to be disposable. Really? Yeah. Yeah, they are. Um, <laughs> and you know, for 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 practice, especially, I, I'm not all that much worried about reliability. Worst case scenario, it gets me it gets gives me a reason to train all my malfunctions, right? Exactly. But like for you know the the Sig platform, I and mean, these metal mags are great, but they're fifty bucks a piece. They are. Mm -hmm. That doesn't say disposable to me. No. Now, granted, I'm a baller on a budget like the rest of us here, but for training, I'd love – or even just competition, I'd love to see, you know, some $25, $30 polymer magazines come out for this. Truth be told, there's no reason these mags can't be polymer. You think so? I mean, that's my, my concern is that, I mean, making them thin-walled like, like to fit in the dimensions, it might be an issue. I don't know. I mean, Glock mags are, are designed, you know, that they have a metal insert with a polymer over them. They give you that dimensions that are available to be able to fit that in the mag well and properly seat and so forth. On a SIG, I, I wonder if there's enough room dimensionally to, to do that with uh, polymers that are available. As, as, as loose as those magazines fit in that mag well, at least in the P320 frame, Yeah, I, I would yeah. say there's plenty of room. Yeah, I agree. I mean, just... I, I can even I can wiggle this thing in the magwell and it's in the gun so it it's fully seated so that extra little bit and that's again that's why I'd like to see it come out of shot show all this research and development from all these companies goes into making the same or uh, making improving upon like the mag release for an AR15 platform you know come on man come out with another magazine give us other options here I got I got an example for you you and I are talking about the uh, gun sight scout rifle there. Yeah, dude, my Ruger scout rifle mags cost me like a small fortune. Mm -hmm. They're ridiculous, and nobody's they, come out with any. There's fives and tens. Now so are they? Get, now, can't the uh, the Ruger scout rifles are those using specific proprietary Ruger mags, or are they using AICS mags? Nope. Mm -hmm. It would be really nice if they were using Accuracy International or something else, but no, they're using straight up Ruger. And then, and not even like a. Not even like a mini 30 style or a mini, like a totally proprietary mag. You can buy them polymer from Ruger for like a 10% savings. Right. But, I mean, that platform has no mag. Like, you can't find anybody else. Right. There's one for you. Yeah, but then you look at, you look at other platforms from Ruger, like their precision rifle, and it takes every magazine under the sun. Yep. yep. Yeah, absolutely. So... Yeah, yeah that's I would just, like to. That's wishful thinking. I mean, I, I like I said, I watch the shot show episodes, you know, that everyone puts up on YouTube, and 
I, I, that's one of the things I'm hoping to see. I'd really like to see some advancements in, in the magazine category. Well, I think the biggest thing right now we've seen is mainly a lot more companies making uh, block mags. I mean, Men 2 obviously is getting into it. Hex Mag has them out. I think they're out already from Hex Mag. Um, you know, you're seeing the ETS, you know, all these different um, ones that are kind of becoming more popular. You know, for a while, it seemed, for me anyway, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Um, it seemed like a lot of them, there's, you know, Korean mags, of course, you could find. I've got some of those. Not nearly as nice as the clock mags and, and all that. But uh, I bought them for cheap practice mags to play with, and we'll see how they work, but uh, more long-term as we go on. But as far as, um, you know, other pistols, yeah, it's, it's been a, that has been a challenge. I would like to see some lower-cost but reliable um you know, mags for like the uh, CZ, you know, 75, for example. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like, I would love to try to run some, you know, again, a tank folio clone or, you know, CZ clone from whatever here. But, uh, yeah, I mean, the mags are, are definitely something that, that's costly. And they said they're disposable. So, you know, it's uh, it'd be nice to see some cheaper options that are still a good quality that you can run them and not feel like you wasted your money on them. You know, that's the biggest thing. You get to get to low cost or polymer, you get to, to, you know, the cheap idea. Then you get to the what, you know, what you paid for column. And it is what it is. So, yeah, but see, I would I would argue that that's a change of mindset from the population. Right. So you get premium magazines that come with your gun. In the with the understanding that, OK, that's going to be your go to set if you want combat self-defense you know whatever premium quality then buy that but if you truly understand that mags are meant to be disposable and if you drop one and it you know it shatters into a, a you know a thousand pieces then so be it if you only paid 15 20 bucks for it versus 50 bucks then once it gets a dent in it you're screwed exactly you know it's 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 all about changing the mindset we need a lifetime warranty on mags that's what we need there you go innovative lifetime warranty on mags Hashtag Magpul. I mean, I, I, not just Magpul, but I'm saying like lifetime warranty on like, you know, pistol mags. You know, the, I, like, say, I, you know, get some Megar mags. I love Megar mags. They're great. They're, they, they do cost some money. And for something like you said, that's eventually disposable over time. That's a wearable item. Yeah, that's the downside to it. But I, I, love, I love their mags, you know. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I know you're gonna say something. No, I, I would say it depends. Uh, if they're gonna put out premium magazines, you know, like it, pretty much any metal magazine that isn't easily replaceable, mm -hmm. then yeah, it should, it should come. A, a warranty would be nice. Like, hey, say I got, you know, during a mag change, there was there's gravel on the range I shoot at. It fell hard enough and it it dented the the body of the magazine. Now it's unusable. Of course, you know the downside of that is how many people are going to just like, drop them out and stomp on them and purposely destroy them to get new ones every once in a while. Rick. Well, I mean, you could argue that with. I mean, I look, no, that. Look, look at Vortex. How many people get pissed off because they can't shoot for to save their lives, and mm -hmm. they throw they throw their rifle at anger and it shatters their scope. Yep. You know, it happens. It, it's going to happen, but but you can't let that exception to the rule justify the rule itself. Yeah. yeah. I, I could just see Rick. Rick would be on a year from now be like, yeah, so it's this Palmer Glock mag and it's got nine holes in it for some reason. <laughs> They're all about nine <laughs> millimeter. I don't know what yeah. happened, but That's they were right. nice. They sent it they sent me a new one. So can, can I get can I get this warranted? <laughs> yeah. There you go. No, I would never ask him on that. I mean, that's that's purposely done, obviously, for video. But, um, and and you know what? I mean, they they honestly they sent that to us to be able to test them, you know, and that's what we did with them and gave them an honest review on it, which um, you know, something I'm looking to do with you know, and, and I'm going to talk about this for a couple minutes briefly before we end, end the uh, show for tonight. But you know, when it comes to product reviews, um, there's this there's this kind of like a I don't want to call it a line, but 
there's different things you have to take in consideration when doing reviews. One, <clears throat> who are you doing it for? You're doing the reviews for people that are watching your channel, right? Um, so you want to give them accurate information. You don't want skewed information. Um, things I, I like, I personally, this is all my personal opinion. I like to include my interviews as a very objective um, overview of, of the product that I'm reviewing or, or showing, um, which means I want to give the good and the bad. Even if I think the product is junk, I still want to give some positive feedback, you know, meaning I want to look for some of the good qualities of that product. I haven't had anything that doesn't have some reasonable, you know, hey, this is kind of cool, okay about it, but this is what I don't like about it, or this is what the what some of the drawbacks are to it, or this could be a potential problem with it. You know, there's negatives and positives on everything, right? So I try to do that. Um, I don't like to do reviews on stuff that's total junk either, just by ch because, you know, I don't really want to, you know, support stuff that's total junk either. So, you know, you also got to consider, people look at it, well, the company sends you something, aren't you biased? No, the reason why I'm not, because honestly, when I talk to a company, I, I tell them I'm going to give an honest review. There might be some things that I don't like or I think that might be an issue with it. And they have to understand that before I'm going to do a review for something. Um, and part of that, what also comes from those reviews, those the negative drawbacks, let's say, are going to be possible innovations or not innovations, but changes to their product. Things that they can improve upon, they see that, and then they can, you know, go back at it. Um, and what else is there to this? I was going to say, I don't believe in bashing companies per se. You know, it, it, and that's kind of the basis of that. What I'm, what I'm getting at with the whole objective part of it. Somebody put their hard work in designing that product. I'm not doing the review for them. I'm doing it for the people that are watching. But there's no need to bash somebody. You can tastefully explain the drawbacks of their product and some of the issues that might be with it in a respectful manner and still get that point across as to what people can expect from the product. At least that's the way I look at it. That's you know? called professionalism. Right. I guess you're right. I guess Exactly. I guess the way to put it. Because there's people that will go out there and, oh, my gosh, this is total chunk. I mean, there's stories I've heard that I can't share uh, um, you know, public, publicly about how, how some um, content creators, bloggers, reviewers, we're going to call them, um, handle themselves in a way that's, that's very much like down and dirty, I guess the way to put it. It's just not right. Um, not an ethical way of, of doing a review or, or talking about a product. Um, you know, there's a lot of content creators that are paid to do reviews and things like that too. The guys that got the million subscriber type things, granted, as I mentioned earlier, uh, my point of view on that, is, as far as the, you know, making videos, I do this because I enjoy doing it. If I make money on it one day, that's great, but I always want it to be objectionable, or, um, you know, to kind of give both sides of the coin to everybody. I'm not, you know, working for a company in a sense. Um, I'm not a paid, you know, actor like some people will say. That's not the case. If they want to contribute to my costs of doing what I do, that's a different story, you know. Um, but that, that's not something I've, I really have any worry about at this point in time because, you know, realistically, it's, my channel is still growing and so forth. But um, there's all these different ways to look at the backside of what goes on as far as YouTube videos and gun reviews and things like that um, in the end. So... Hopefully, I'm just doing right by you know our viewers that watch this stuff and trying not to give any misinformation and trying to, to be objectionable about you know um, objective I guess is what we're trying to say objective objectionable I don't know I'm probably using the words incorrectly but objective about my over my overviews and reviews and things like that you know just to give honest you know reviews on the stuff um, but uh, anyway ramble on long enough. Uh, you guys got any last final thoughts before we wrap up for the night? I'll go with you, Corey, first, because you're on the one end of my screen. Great. Um, <clears throat> yeah, we on the spot. Um, now, guys, it's uh, it's it's been a hellacious uh, last uh, last week for me, I guess. Uh, as you guys know, I had surgery last Wednesday. Um, mm -hmm. This one's 
been rather painful. Oh man, I'm sorry to hear that. And uh, l- let me tell you, last Thursday, the day after, <clears throat> it, it was just excruciating. I've never had that before. And uh, I, I tell you what, I was damn near in tears. My my wife locked herself out of the apartment, and I didn't know it because I was asleep. Now I had to get up and go open the door for her, and I was in tears the entire way. And uh, but other than that, it's 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 gotten better since uh, since Saturday. It's just really sore now. Um, so everything's getting better. Hopefully, uh, hopefully I get get to uh, get some uh, good good prognosis um, or yeah, whatever absolutely. you want to call it. Um, at next week, I see him. So hopefully, hopefully the, this uh, short term of, of pain, you know, yeah, is something that's positive in the end. Yeah, I, I hope you know? so too. You know, I, I I don't know how many more of these leg things I gotta have to go through, but uh, I tell you, they they sure are not fun. Right, anyway, but I, uh, yeah, sorry you have to go through this. It sucks. But uh, anyways, you know, it's it's the end of 2017, and. Uh, I've been yeah. I've been on here with you, Rick, for for the last six months, and I I am so appreciative. It's been that of, long, man! I can't even yeah. believe it. Yeah, it's, that's, that's cool. Yeah, I I'm so appreciative of the opportunity every week for you having me on and uh, getting to talk with you guys and hang out. So yeah, we enjoy having you on here. It's always fun. But uh, anyways, everybody, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year's. If we're not here next week, yep, um, from me and Southern Style Beards. So well, uh, next week would be after Christmas anyway. So yeah, definitely. Exactly. Yeah. You know, we didn't even get into what our Christmas wish list was. We didn't even cover that. <laughs> well, my my scope is all I wanted, so I'm good. Yeah, I mean that's kind of how I feel this year too. The Henry rifle was was my whole deal. Yep. Um, but uh, yeah, well, I appreciate having you. Thank you again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Kent, you got any last thoughts? What do you want to say? What you want? Christmas, I guess, for that last minute thing. No, man, I get myself whatever I want. I'm like my own Santa. It's great. I just go buy stuff, <laughs> try to hide it from the wife. Um, I got another <laughs> class coming up this weekend at six, so I guess yeah, you can talk about that. No, it's we'll okay. To, yeah, afterwards we'll have to cover that and talk a little bit about it and how yeah. it goes. Yeah, so that'll be the last class of the year, like three days before the end of the year, four. So that's pretty cool. Um. I don't know. Let's see. I can give you a Christmas wish list item. You know what I want for Christmas? I want a Ruger American Predator 6.5 Creedmoor left-handed because TJ told me I did about 20 minutes ago on the private chat. <laughs> so that's his fault. You'll shoot your eye out, Kent. <laughs> yes, oh, I will. God. Man, it's like I was watching that. If you talk about Clint Smith, I was watching one of those videos the other day. And uh, he was saying, like, yeah, rifles will – what do you say? Rifles will blow. Well, pistols put bullets in people. Rifles put holes through people, and shotguns take a chunk of you, you know your whatever and throw it across the room or something like that. I forgot how he worded it, but it was it was like pretty classic. And he you know, shoot your eye out. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's gonna put a hole through your skull, basically. Happy thoughts. <laughs> anyway, get things again, Kent and uh, CJ. You got anything? No, man, uh, just a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to everybody. Uh, Christmas wish list? Um, actually, so I asked Santa for new reloading equipment. I'd like to upgrade to a Dylan setup. I knew that was going to the D word. Yep. Nice. Yeah, you know, I got into reloading. I got into reloading uh, kind of on my own. Uh, luck, just by pure luck, I had a buddy who was handling an estate sale uh, for a widow and her, her late husband who had a truckload of reloading equipment. And I was able to pick up my first reloading press, which was a, a Lee Loadmaster uh, for, for really cheap, uh, really good price. And that's what I got started with. And just with the volume of shooting that I do now, I'm barely able to keep up with it, uh, with that Lee setup. Wow. So it's... It, it, you, going, you going 550 or 650? I, I prefer the 650. Uh, I, I I don't like progressive presses that you have to manually advance. Um, I'm I'm looking for pure volume. I'm gonna keep my my Lee single stage for precision stuff, um, but everything else, so like five five six, three hundred blackout, nine millimeter, all your high volume stuff, it needs to come out of a progressive to really keep up with it. So see, ever since right. I got my Dylan, I haven't loaded a single thing on the single stage, not one. 
not one round. I told myself the same thing, but it's been no, about I'm just, a year. Yeah. yeah, I'm just I'm more meticulous with it. And you know, and like I'm like I said, I was gonna with my brother picking up that six five uh, predator. I want to teach him how to reload. Um, so I think the single stage is a good way to learn. And actually, I think rifle cartridges are probably easier to load mm-hmm. for, for new loaders. Um, just because le- less of a chance of, of double charging the case, um, at least not without spilling it everywhere and making an obvious mistake. So, um, so yeah. And, way, and again, uh, you know, I've got my son. You know, my son's going to be old enough to start reloading here soon. Um, so... I think getting started out with him on that single stage is going to be a good move for him. And and if my son touches my Dylan, I'll probably break his fingers. <laughs> nice. Which, you know, by the way, just to kind of get my background on the loading stuff real shortly, I had a friend who um, had a single stage in Hornady Press and uh, lock and load, and uh, he had sold his pistol and whatnot and had this sitting in his house, and he was looking to sell it. And I'm like, hey, I'm getting into shooting more. You know, he had some dies for 45, you know, that's what he had. And, um so I bought that off him, and I got into reloading 9mm, did my first 1,000 rounds, you know, and um, on that press and 9mm and ran all those, and it was great. And uh, decided, you know, I wanted to get into a progressive, um, started doing that. And uh, since I moved down here, I haven't had a chance to, to use it. You can kind of see it over my shoulder there, but um, I haven't, haven't had a chance to get into um, cranking out some rounds. I, I've got, you know, a bunch of Eagle stimulations to – you know, projectiles to work with, you know, with the uh, um, 300 blackout. I want to get some some of those rounds made up because I I think I've only got a few rounds left of my 300 blackout, honestly, and I need to kind of crank some out so I can go run my my uh, 300 blackout rifle and my pistol and um, also some more 45s. And those are the two, two of the my, my common ones I'm kind of low on right now. And, uh, of course, I, I've, um, I've got sitting here. I bought a while back. There was a deal like on Wolf um, projectiles, which no, they're not by metal like you would think. They are copper jacketed, non non steel, you know, non magnetic um, projectiles. Fifty five grainers for two two three. Um, just wanted to buy a large amount of them to be able to do some uh, you know plinking around, so to speak. You know, nothing that's like super high accuracy, but more or less just a volume for. C two three, so I bought like four thousand of them. I think it was. Um, I want to say they were. I forget what the cost per round was. I know some of them, some of the other projectiles at the time were around ten cents or so. From maybe the Hornadies were like that. I want to say they were like somewhere between five and seven cents or something like that. Well, it was quite a bit. When you look at you know, yeah, that small difference, but you're talking times four thousand. It adds up. So. Um, <laughs> I wanted to, to go ahead and get start getting loaded on loading on those caliber as well on progressive press. Uh, I haven't loaded my rifle rounds on the progressive. The only thing I have done was I've um, seeded my bullets that way. Um, went ahead and, and you know prep you know did all the cartridge prepping and all that kind of stuff and using my progressive and then you know did all my powder charges one at a time. And then went ahead and, and just had like, you know, say a tray of them that are all filled up, ready to go. You know, put a bullet on it, put it in my progressive press, pull it. You know, put a bullet on it, put it in my progressive press, pull it. And just run them through that way. Um, but I'll probably use my power, powder dispenser to do that next. Um, granted, you know, I got to find a powder that's going to meter really well. Um, I picked up some BLC2 that I want to try out uh, with that because it's a finer powder. and I, It seemed like it was metering pretty decently. Um, but some of the other stick powders, you get a variance, you know, between them on them. So I, I won't kind of stay, from, stay away from that for doing the progressive press. But, uh, anyway, got into rambling about reloading stuff that I want to get done too for this coming year as well. <laughs> it's more reloading stuff. Um, present, you know, Christmas time, like I said, the Henry rifle was my, my biggest present this, this, uh, as far as gun stuff goes, um, you know, this year, I'm really happy about that. And, uh, I actually got to take it out to the range and shoot it this past weekend. I did a little video. I uploaded it. If you haven't seen it, check it out on the regular Big Gun 81 channel. Um, shoots really nice. Uh, I even tried the uh, 22 shorts in it as well. Um, much quieter. I wish I could shoot with my ear pro off in, indoors, but other people are shooting too, so it's kind of hard to, to do that just to get a really a good feel for how quiet it is. But uh, um, hopefully going to be – do a little more shooting with that this coming week um, to try it out. So, 
anyway, enough rambling on my port part here. Um, that is all I've got for tonight. Thank you again, all of you guys, for being on with us and for everybody out there watching, listening. Uh, one last, I always got one last thing. I forgot to mention this. We had a comment out on on YouTube tonight, which uh, for those that don't know, we've been. If you're watching this live, you know this. It's being streamed through the Big Gun One Live channel, not the regular Big Gun One channel, because the whole channel strike thing. Which in a few weeks, I think after the, well, next few weeks or so, we should be able to restream or restart streaming again from our main channel. But we'll also keep uploading the live shows to this channel as well, just to keep everything, you know, for the live show in one place as a backup. Um, so out on out on the uh, the live chat going on right now, Clever C had said. Earlier, when we were talking about Vortex and optics, he said my Vortex Spark was uh, returned and replaced with a Spark Two, and love it. Much better than losing my uh, much better than losing my red dot. Much better than losing my red dot during a PR match. So, I don't know what that meant. I guess I, if he lost his, I'm sorry, my eyes are all screwed up. I'm trying to read this. Um, his small print. Much better than losing my red dot during a PR match. I'm not really sure what he meant by that, but I get the whole idea of sending back a spark and getting a return with a spark too, because they obviously they they up, you know, updated it through Vortex, and then again that's what they do as well. They they will exchange it out for uh, the most current model and so forth for you at Vortex. So it's kind of cool. But uh, anyway, appreciate everybody watching. Again, have a merry Christmas. And uh, if we don't see you right after Christmas on here, we will be back. Uh, on 2018 on the first after the first year so thanks again everybody and uh until then have fun shooting <laughs>